And that gets back to uh, why I think polemically, uh, why uh, those like Voss and uh, Machen and Fantil and others were willing to give up so much on, on, on this issue in regard to what was going on in Presbyterianism in that, uh, you know, Foss says at the end of the sermon that Jesus was uh, is conscious of carrying uh, the source and substance of the blessings of the kingdom of God in his own person. And that is why he can declare in the Sermon on the Mount, I say unto you. And if you if you strip the Sermon on the Mount of that of that Jesus, the divine Jesus, uh, the God man, then you've stripped religion at its very essence, biblical religion. There's nothing left. And uh, so, um, you know, the centrality of Jesus and what God has done in bringing us into this relationship, the saving relationship, is, is Christianity. There, there, there's no other Christianity. And, um, and so that is the foundation from which uh, then doctrinally we proceed. And, uh, and so in that sense, um, you know, this, this gets to the fact that um, there's so many things we could say, but I, I think of Machen. Machen, years later um, in the Presbyterian conflict, finally, you know, as the, it was apparent that the, uh, a new church was going to have to be formed, what became what we now know as the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, he b- believed that the church should be, be defined not only by a Christ-centeredness, but by a broken heart. And there's no way in a school of ethics, if that is what Christianity is, that you could ever get to a broken heart. But if you know it's a kingdom of redemption in which you owe everything to your God and you have failed your God, then a broken heart is the first step unto knowing that you cannot save yourself and your entire hope rests in, in Jesus. And, and, and then, you know, uh, you know, blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Or blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, uh, for they shall be satisfied. Amen. So, you know, uh, well, preaching to the choir, I'm sure. But uh, I just, uh, sometimes, you know, I, I just know that the complaint comes, well, can't you let well enough be? <laughs> Can't you, you know, just let it go? Those of us who no, because Jesus will not let it go. And the question is, you know, will we receive Jesus at his word or not? That's really the question I think of the sermon ultimately. Who is Jesus? And he's our Savior and Lord. That's what the Sermon on the Mount is proclaiming.